Okay, so we were talking a little bit before, or depending on where I put all the sequencing of film, about the two-beat feel. Now, the two-beat feel was the first jazz um, rhythmic feel. And it really came out of the New Orleans brass bands, which uh, played for um, funerals, celebrations of every kind, picnics. New Orleans was a happening city as far as music, live music. And uh, the small brass bands ragged the music, and we'll talk about that, the difference between um, ragging the music, changing the rhythm, putting syncopation in there, and then as swing developed, um, how much um, smoother it got over the um, over the century. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to give you a tune that they would have played when the Saints go marching in, for instance. And uh, I've synthetically created uh, a trumpet, a clarinet, a trombone, a banjo, um, a tuba, and uh, a bass drum and a snare drum. So that could have been your small brass band at the time. Now, I will isolate the instruments, and then I'll explain to you how um, what they did. You know, basically, this is called collective improvisation. So in the early days of jazz, we didn't have, let's say, a Charlie Parker solo where he's going to play for 32 bars, and uh, everybody else just supports him, and then the next soloist or whatever. We're talking about everybody soloing at the same time. Because soloing wasn't as important because people hadn't developed it yet until after Louis Armstrong did such a great job um, and showed everybody that you could improvise on pretty much anything. And at that point in time, then the improvisation exploded and we had some people that could really do it. So this was, um, in a purist idea, this was the, the way jazz was and that's what they wanted it always to be, is the collective improvisation. So let's talk about that two-beat feel and I'll see if I can get the, um, uh, the drums here. Okay, so here comes just the drums. So we're going to hear the bass drum and the uh, snare drum. So you hear one, three, one, two, three. But the drummer is, the bass drum is doing a little bit something a little bit different. He's playing bump, 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 bump. So he syncopate that that one beat right ahead of one beat one instead of coming in on one like a, a drummer in a military band would do. Okay, all right. So let me just isolate that. So just listen to the uh, bass drummer. One two three four. One two three. Uh, two three four. One two three. Uh, two three four. One two three four. One two three four. One two three four. Hear that extra beat? That's the New Orleans style. That's the New Orleans style. Now let's add the uh, the snare drummer. So he's going to play a lot of triplets. And that's the three against two. That we have the polyrhythmic thing that makes what uh, jazz was coming off of West African music, which was totally uh, poly, um, polyrhythmic. Okay. And we'll talk about that, where we're mixing rhythms. Um, so I'm doing three with one hand and two with another. Okay, and hopefully that didn't screw up my computer. Okay, um, so let's get back to uh, now. What we're going to add is we're going um, we're going to add. Well, let me. I didn't play, did I? Okay. There we go again. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the tuba, which eventually would come become a string bass. Now, you can't really walk down the street with a string bass. And brass instruments were available in um, in shops in uh, New Orleans because of uh, when the Civil War ended, the soldiers who were in the brass bands, uh, they weren't going to go home with a tuba, so they, uh, they sold it. And it became instruments easily obtained uh, by African Americans who wanted to make music. Okay, so let let me uh, add the tuba to that. So the tuba will play the basis of the chords. It'll play the bass note of the chords. And it will also establish that one and three, one, three, one, three, the two beat feel. All right, so let's listen to that. So here's the drums. And we're going to add the tuba in there. All right, cool. Three, four, one, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four. Now he really doesn't do any swinging much because he's playing on quarter notes on the beat. But he might do like that. All right, bop, 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 bop. So he's adding a little bit of embellishment. And it's that's what we encourage. All right, so we got an idea of what the, um, the tuba is adding, that bass line. Okay, so now let's add a chord instrument. Now, the chord instrument of that time would have been something you could walk down the street with, but it was loud enough that people would be able to hear it. And you can't take a piano down the street. So, and eventually then when they were playing in brothels and so forth, they were playing this style, style music. It might be just a piano player okay, who would be simulating this style music all by himself, like Jelly Roll Morton. So that's an, um, that was more prolific, actually. You know, you couldn't always get a band, but like uh, little clubs would have a piano and there would be a piano player. All right, so let's get back to this. So we would have a banjo. Now, the banjo is an African instrument, and it's a string instrument. So it's kind of like a guitar, but with the metal strings and the, uh, the snare kind of uh, metallic ring around the, uh, the vibrating source, it's pretty loud. So I want you to hear the, uh, what the banjo is going to play with the drums and the bass. So the banjo is going to play on the two and the four. So it'll be a nice syncopated between, yeah. Now if I just isolate the uh, banjo and the bass for the tuba, see how they work together? Yeah. So what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to have a collective conversation. And you know how a conversation goes. You can't have everybody talking at the same time. So basically, all these musicians are trying to not get in the way of each other and leave each other some space. So you'll hear that when we add the horns. Okay, so we've got that. All right, so now let's get back and put the drums back in with the banjo and the tuba. And we're going to add our melodic instrument, the one that's going to play the melody, which will always be the trumpet. In most cases, the trumpet is going to be the melodic king. That's why when we start out, who were the famous players of uh, jazz in the New Orleans star uh, era? We're going to start with Buddy Bolden, who unfortunately was never recorded. So we don't really know how great he was, but uh, there's been a lot of talk about that. And then Joe King Oliver, uh, who was the mentor to Louis Armstrong, who became the king of all jazz, which you'll hear plenty of over this term. Okay, but the trumpet. Uh, there were other great players in the New Orleans periods, like Sidney Bechet on clarinet and soprano saxophone, but he played clarinet and soprano saxophone. And Jelly Roll Morton, the greatest songwriter of the day, um, he played piano. And we'll talk about and listen to him too. But King is trumpet. All right, so listen to the melody. So you're going to hear when the saints go marching in, but the trumpet player has an opportunity to kind of like embellish the rhythm. Change the rhythm a little bit, add some extra notes. Right there. Right there. All right, that's cool. Now, when he does the melody the second time, you hardly hear the melody. And I'll talk about that when I do the thing about improvisation. Now, this was improvised. There wasn't music. Everybody knew the melody. And so they kind of uh, figured out what part they could play and made it all collectively work together. Okay, so now, let's break down the instruments. So let's just take the uh, the trumpet, we'll leave the drums out, and we'll uh, leave the tuba in so that we can at least hear the root of the uh, the chords, okay, which is our support to the melody, melody harmony. Um, and of course, the most important uh, element, of course, is rhythm in all of this music, whether it's jazz, rock, or blues, because the rhythm, how we play the notes, where we play the notes, the feel, that's all coming from the rhythm, Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, let's say I'm the clarinet player. So what I'm doing as a clarinet player is I want to play something that doesn't get in the way of the trumpet player, but it's kind of like uh, up above because I can play fast and I can play notes above the trumpet, at least at that period of time before trumpets kept going higher and higher. And it won't get in the way of the trumpet. It'll be a nice uh, foil over top, noodle, noodle, noodle. All right, so let's listen to the trumpet, the clarinet, the tuba. Okay, and so you'll hear, listen carefully for that clarinet sound. You'll hear how the, it doesn't get in the way. 
You get the idea then. So when you listen to New Orleans style music, listen for the clarinet player up on top, the trumpet player in the middle, and then we're going to add um, the trombone player. And the trombone player has a slide. So he's going to be able to do things that other instruments can't do. He can slide up to a note. Um, whoop, something like that, right? You can just imagine that. You've heard the trombone player, uh, I'm sure. So let me just do the trombone player and the uh, trumpet player by themselves, and I'll then add the uh, clarinet again. All right, so you can hear the trombone player will kind of stay out of the way, but he's going to be below the trumpet. Mm -hmm. Now you might say, how in the world without music do these guys play so perfectly so they leave space and they know what the other guy's going to do? Well, you play with somebody enough, you kind of know what their habits are. You know when to interject into a conversation, um, when you're talking to a friend. You kind of know when they've ended their sentence and you're just going to add your two cents, let's say. All right, now let's listen to the interplay between the three instruments. The clarinet, the tuba, and I mean, not the tuba, the tuba's there all the time. Uh, the trombone and the trumpet, okay? Now, we really don't even need the chord instrument because by the time you get all the notes covered between the three instruments, you pretty much outline the chord pretty well. Now I'm just going to leave those instruments play by themselves, take out the, um, the tuba. But this is the essence of where it started. Okay, so let me try that, see whether the sound worked out this time, because it's my second take, we'll see. Okay. 